The definition of my art is, uh, is my life. Like, there's no difference between who I am and what I draw or my final works. My, my purpose is to tribute contemporary uh, life, everyday life. So I like to give importance to things that uh, we just give for granted. My art is what I live, is, is the simple, simple as that. When life becomes art, traveling also becomes art because traveling is part of daily life. Uh, life. I want to see Korean life. I'm very excited and my expectation, um, so I'm just free to take everything in. But I think it's going to be very good. This artist travels back more than a thousand years to Gyeongju, where the city, its people and the landscape become one piece of art. Ichon, preserving centuries-old ceramic art, holds ceramic festivals every year. Italian ceramic artist Luce Raggi is visiting one of Ichon's festivals. I'm Luce Raggi. I'm a drawer. I'm from Italy. This is the second time I was invited in Ichon for the ceramic workshop. Every year, potters from around the world are invited to Ichon to showcase their experimental works and engage in art workshops. Even among artists, Luce is known for her extraordinary work. I like to live my life uh, not in a boring way, so I like to make things that makes, make me and make other people Smile. Luce approaches one of the potters and hands her a ceramic piece shaped like a thumb. This work is about to document it. So it's like I went around with my phone, with my camera, and I was taking pictures of people uh, wearing this. I, I like this project of uh, thumbs because um, it helped me connect to people and people were really happy about playing with them. So uh, ceramic become as a game, become something happy, something ironic. And it was a good feeling. She has met diverse people through the ceramic thumb project over the past year. Some people are smiling and some people can react even not smile. Like irony is not always positive. It can be good or it can be bad, but it's always there. <laughs> I feel this. <laughs> Kimchi. <laughs> My work is always uh, connected to everyday life. So usually I reproduce objects from our uh, normal day. My, my work is a, it's connected to uh, everyday life. This, is not this animation is about ceramic thumbs that travel the world to meet people from various backgrounds. Then my drawing uh, become uh, mainly ceramic. And then from ceramic, they become uh, video art. I can say that um, my work is very conceptual, so it starts from the idea. 
She wants her works to have a more profound meaning than just a complete piece of art. Do it in ceramic is like give a tribute to the object that we always use, but we never give importance to them. So if you make them ceramic, it's like you make them in eternity. It's like a tribute. Some people think uh, I take the piece, but it's a tribute. It's my way to tribute. Her ceramics are reborn into other art genres, such as video art. She makes her own path in the art world. Rather than sticking to a single genre, she wants to be known as a visual artist. Art uh, is a very big uh, word, so everyone has to find his way in art. And I, I feel that the Korean ceramic has a lot of tradition and passion to it. Luce says she has received enormous inspiration from Korean traditional art. A lot of culture and tradition. I mean, it has to be a place where people are full of culture. So that's very uh, interesting for my art and for my life. She begins her journey back in time to learn about the history of Korean art. Gyeongju is a historic city that used to be the capital of the ancient Shilla Kingdom. The new cities are more like mon monsters. The old cities are pretty ladies. <laughs> Not pretty ladies, like pretty grandmothers. <laughs> Being in Gyeongju is like jumping a thousand years back to another era. I'm used to think about art from the past and I'm used to live in a place full of art from the past. So there's no future without the past. It's good to look forward but always look back. Hello. 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 What do you think of all? This mound. These are all tombs mm -hmm. uh, from Shilla Kingdom. Oh, just now, if you want, to, I will explain about this area. Ancient royal tombs are spread across the city. This is where the rich cultural legacy of the Shilla Kingdom flourished. The shape of the gigantic ancient tombs catches the eye. The tombs at Forsyth really looks like eels. So um, I was very surprised when they told me that these were the tombs. Uh, you know, this one, we say twin mound tomb. This one, maybe king's tomb. The left tomb is his wife tomb. In Gyeongju, lots of tombs are located because capital of Shila Kingdom. at the shapes, uh -huh. they also remind me a lot of human body. Uh -huh. they, they are very feminine shapes, uh -huh. right? like very, the pyramid yeah, or it's right? much more yeah, like yeah. men. Mm -hmm. But it's in this case, like very, yeah. smooth. Yeah. 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 The royal tumuli from the Shilla period all have these gentle slopes. So what I really like about these uh, tombs mm -hmm. is that they are completely integrated in a nature. Mm -hmm. Like you look at them and they are like eels, mm -hmm. but then you know they are tombs. Uh, yeah. So I think it's very poetic. Uh-huh. Uh, Shila people's uh, way of thinking, that is uh, dead uh, living. It just uh, exist together. They are not separate from each other. They just dead and uh, living uh, gathered together. Mm -hmm. Chilla people believed that life and death were connected. That belief created the unique landscape of Gyeongju. It's also the reason the city is beautiful. 
I've never seen uh, tombs like this, so simple, so elegant, uh, it's very simple, but yeah. meaningful. Uh, what I found interesting, juxtaposition of past and present and future, the city starts really close to the tombs, and so you have the tombs and the motel, the supermarket, restaurant, and they are all together. And uh, this was like, this is like a cultural shock, but I found it very interesting. This place where the ancient tombs are located is regarded as one of the most scenic spots in the city. Luce takes out her sketchbook. I am used to travel and I always have the sketchbook with me. And in this case, I, I draw what I found interesting. I'm drawing like the shapes of uh, the tombs, which to me look very feminine. They look like breast or S. Too, but feminine, even if they are the tomb of the king, they still look feminine. She is interested in the contrast between the traditional and the modern, and the irony created by the old and the new. I'm interested in um, ironic, what's ironic in life, and what is uh, a contradiction. And um, they are in contrast with all the motel or you can see in the background near to them. So it's just a sketch, but this is what I got. She draws ancient tombs against tall buildings as a woman's breasts. Awash in yellow blossoms, Gyeongju is particularly beautiful in spring. Visiting uh, Gyeongju was a pleasure and was very interesting. Everything made sense. A stone structure stands tall and ancient. It's the Chamsongde Observatory. The observatory himself, just alone, was one of my favorite thing I saw during this trip. And then they explained me that uh, there, there was uh, one, one stone, one brick for each day of the year, and it was very symbolic and also very short, not tall, human. It feels very human. Even after more than 1,400 years, Chamsongde has retained its original form. Built during the Shilla period to forecast the fortunes of the kingdom, it is the oldest existing astronomical observatory in Asia. But my guessing is that both the hills or the palace or the observatory, all the buildings are not too high, also to make the king looking taller. This is my guessing. The rich and powerful royal court of the Shilla Kingdom has left behind extraordinary works of art, such as these gold crowns. So I think it was a very opulent society they wanted to show, like richness, but also was very masculine society. This is what gold gave me the idea. Priceless treasures of the Shilla Kingdom shine brilliantly to this day. And here's a place that has preserved the legacy of Shilla gold crowns. He's another master that wants uh, to reproduce what was done in the past and wants to keep the tradition. It's an experience. Hmm. Already cold. Wow. Now you did uh, silver. Yeah, un. Yeah, silver. Un. Uh, 언제 흐리띠? 
These artifacts were found in the royal tombs. Chezangi is a metal art master who restores gold crowns of the Shilla kingdom. Because I see it's very important to keep tradition here. Very attracted to the work of artisans. The works of Shilla metal artisans who created these masterpieces by hand are exquisite and sophisticated even by today's standards. But I saw that him, when he does his work, he's very in his zone, he's very concentrated. And his job is very noble. Then uh, he showed me all the work he's reproducing and uh, I was amazed by how precise he was. He recreates the subtle hand movements of Shilla artisans. These lines are so little. This, like, sun? These ornaments are shaped like tree branches and leaves. This reminds me traditional Italian design too. All the design uh, from history uh, kind of uh, similar from different cultures. But uh, sun, moon, is everywhere is same. Numerous relics were buried in the royal tombs along with the gold crowns. This time, the master creates something else. What is he making? The shoes. The shoes were, uh, my attention went to uh, the fact that the shoes were very, very big and uh, like Michael Jordan shoes. Was the king really wearing these shoes and walk on this? The golden light of the Shilla kingdom shines in these exquisite artifacts. Ors has to be very big and full of gold, and the king itself has to have like very long shoes, very big crown. Everything is to make the king bigger. These sophisticated ornaments were used to pray for the king's well-being and demonstrate his power. Oh, I, saw, I thought this like music. No, it's us of the horse, okay. No. <laughs> After this, I'm scared. Um, uh, leg. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, arm. Like wings. This shape reminds me also of uh, gladiators. Shape, Romans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My mind is getting very melting pot of cultures. <laughs> okay. Jumping over a thousand years, the spirit of artisans lives on. With ancient relics sprawled across the city, Gyeongju is an outdoor museum.
what makes it particularly charming is the lush greenery right in the heart of the city. I like to walk in the nature, so I tried to walk to feel what I was surrounded by, even it was uh, you breathe something very alive instead of something that was planted or imported. These tree grows there, in this, they weren't put there. They, this was their born place. So walking through forest, which is in, authentic, give me much more authentic vibe of how old Korea or the Silla dynasty was. This time, Luce arrives at a Buddhist temple located in a serene setting. It's Chungungsa. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. She is welcomed by two bhikkhunis who are dedicated to finding and practicing Buddhism in daily life. Work period. Uh, is sweeping outside. Mm. So, Venerable Yejin shows Luce how they sweep the yard. In Buddhism, sweeping has a special meaning. So when we sweeping, then this is uh, is meditation. A temple work period is uh, everything is meditation. Then when we sweeping, then our mind also sweeping, dusty things also many thinking things we sweeping. I have to try it every morning. <laughs> She tries her hand at sweeping the ground. Good, good. No, the noise, the sound is good. The sound of the broom has a soothing effect. I agree with the concept of uh, work makes you clean your mind. To clean their mind. They were cleaning their minds. For me, the the same thing is when I draw. The visitor brings a smile to their faces. <laughs> All of a sudden, Luce begins to draw something with the broom. It's a large circle. Because the uh, circle makes me relax. And the uh, circle is life. I think yeah. it could be um, very good for me to stay also. Maybe yeah, yeah, time, we very cool. Like... Luce decides to spend the night at the temple. But the best part was the beginning when she performed with the circle instrument. But in this moment, uh, that was Good, good for my ears, good for my eyes, good for my art, that was good. It was very tribal, it was very from earth. Uh, simple, elegant, but like boom, 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 boom. The sound of the drum stirs the mind. Since ancient times, Kyungju has been the center of Buddhism. Shila people were devout Buddhists and their tradition has been preserved to this day. The entire temple is adorned with lanterns to mark Buddha's birthday. This is a sight that can only be seen at this time of year. In Buddhism, you can, you can see these lights. They are in form of lotus flower. So, and the lotus flower, it is uh, known that it comes from mud, but mm. it needs very clean water. So it's the symbol of awakening. From the, you overcome the suffering, with the, you practice diligently, and then you 
get awakened and become the flower. Buddhists believe that by lighting up lanterns, they can light up people's souls as well. The lotus uh, is the symbol of Buddhism. From the dirt can grow something so special and clean and pure. Lanterns are a light for achieving enlightenment. They also represent sincerity. Ten years before, put the candle and make a wish. Is Nado. They lower themselves beneath the lanterns. Of course I expressed a wish, but I'm not going to tell you the wish, because if you express a wish and then you tell the wish, then the wish disappears. It has been a meaningful day for Luce. She decides to document her stay in Gyeongju while the experiences are still vivid in her mind. I'm preparing the elements for the animation. So um, during these days, I took photos uh, of um, what we saw, like in Gyeongju. So, the observatory, the tombs, or some figures like dragon and lotus flowers, architectural elements and paintings, and uh, I'm cleaning each element, so then I can have them ready for the animation. She plans to produce an animation film using photos that she has taken around Gyeongju. The preparation is actually uh, is to clean my mind. Like we went to see the monks, the monks to clean their mind, they work like doing. And me to clean my mind, I draw. And to clean my mind before an animation, I prepare for it. A modern city and an ancient kingdom in one place. This unlikely match has left a strong impression on the artist. Contradictions are uh, part of life and they make life interesting. From history to contemporary, uh, everyday life, that this is what moves me. And um, maybe it's more clear if I say like irony. Like irony for me is, uh, is the most interesting thing. To Luce, Gyeongju is a city of irony where the old and the new coexist together. Here's how she feels about the city. Kyochon village is home to a cluster of traditional style houses, Hanok. Narrow paths wind between stone walls. Traditional style houses with tile roofs still stand in their original form. If I have to talk about uh, civilization, I kind of always connect to the idea of woman because uh, of uh, the, the food, the architecture and everything when it's very from the past, there is a lot of life that was lived. Sightseeing is not the only thing you can do here. The village offers various cultural programs. Luce has a go at making traditional rice cakes. I love the roof of Korean old houses. I think the roof are amazing. But at the time they were looking for beauty, proportion, and everything had a different... Uh... 
She takes to Hanok houses with their elegant tile roofs. Luck is on her side. She gets to see how the roof tiles are replaced. Also, it's, uh, it looked very risky because they keep walking down from where earth was falling down. So there is a big uh, willing of uh, keeping the tradition. Preserving traditions requires a lot of effort and care. It was interesting to know that the rooftop are changed every 50 years because it would just be easy to make and also cheaper work and quicker work to make a new roof. Gyeongju is a beautiful city thanks to all the efforts to protect its cultural legacy. A special travel mate joins Luce today. Kim Adam is a visual artist who uses light. Her drawings created with water and light emerge from darkness. But as soon as the lights are on, they disappear like magic. She captures art in fleeting moments. Luce and Adam visit a special structure built during the Shilla period. It's the Woljongyo Bridge, which has a roof. My first impression was like, wow, this is a masterpiece of symmetry. Everything is so symmetric there. I saw it, I was amazed by the painting and the symmetry of it. And especially they were very, what I found uh, more interesting is that they were connected to the architecture. And uh, all, most the architecture is wood. So if the wood is this, the lotus goes here. If there is a piece of wood, like symmetric like this, the lotus expands here. So I, I like the connection between the drawing and the, the, the architectural shape where it is drawn. The roof tiles add to Gyeongju's scenic landscape. Then how are they made? Luce meets an artisan who has dedicated 50 years to making roof tiles. He is busy at work. He makes dough with clay and attaches it to a wooden barrel. Chung Mun Gir still follows the traditional method. Well, when you know something new, it's always good for you. The, his preparation for the bricks, it's much more interesting than the final product. After the basic framework of the tiles is ready, it's time to add patterns. All the wood uh, stamps that are on shown in his studio are so fascinating, but he's so surrounded by uh, history. The frame is decorated with a comb pattern. <laughs> Once the basic frame is ready, it's removed from the barrel and left to dry in the wind. Mm. 
The tiles are cut out and baked in a kiln. So I had no idea about, I saw many, many roof top in Korea and I was very fascinated by them, but him explaining me all the elements was uh, important. The woman is like bigger foundation and the male goes on top and then there are the final at the end of the roof the brick is different because the, there is a brick with a another surface and this is called the protector. Traditional tiles are designed in a scientific way. But what makes them beautiful is that their elaborate patterns are drawn individually by hand. of course, it's very noble what he does, but still he is uh, he's surrounded by all this old uh, stamp, but these stamps make him really connected to history. So uh, they were the most fascinating thing in his studio. you. <laughs> I'm Luce is inspired by the mysterious tile patterns. These uh, uh, sculptures gave me the inspiration for painting on his uh, roof brick. I draw a dragon, like typical to reproduce an animal, but like a dragon has the skin of the snake or the horn of a deer. So various elements, various animals in the same image. The two artists decorate the tiles in their own way. Many times my approach to ceramic is very childhood, but sometimes it's like uh, ceramic is in me in some way. But it was funny, it was very funny, and I respect his job very much. For you. Thank you. Kazanda. Trego. Chodo ana tirikke. Arem si. Ne. Kimarin. Kose hese. Ah, ne. Si, yorutsa. It was good to watch him working. Uh, he is uh, more for doing his job, doing good and doing it quicker. And then after him, his son is going to have the responsibility. But until he is there, he wants to do it. <laughs> Luce is inspired by the painstaking tile-making process, which, like pottery, requires a harmony of clay, water, fire, wind, and the artisanal spirit. The two artists have spent the day together. What have they learned about each other? 
제가 작업하는 건 라이트 드로잉이, 드로잉이라는 건데 빛을 비춰가지고 그림을 그리는 거예요. 아예 안막 상태로 만든 다음에 저희가 이제 손전도로 그림을 그릴 예정이에요. 음, 빛으로 그림을 그리는 콜라보레이션? Yeah, I want to see, especially uh, first time I work with your technique, light technique. So I'm curious, I'm very curious. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. Good. 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 They come up with a draft for their collaboration. What will it look like through light drawing? The Sangojangyong이라고 하잖아요. 루치한테 있는 스타일이 저한테는 없거든요. 그렇다 보니까 콜라보 할때 되게 재밌었어요. 또 색다른 작업 같은 게 있으니까 더, 전 재밌게 작업했거든요. That was tradition against instinct. It's interesting always to experiment new techniques, and it was very good to work with Aram. I think that it's very important to collaborate with other artists, just be generous and open mind and share your work, they share your, theirs. To Luce, a visual artist, it is interesting to see how light can be transformed into a work of art. We have to find balance with other artists, even if very different but connecting. And if then you find a connection, um, it becomes interesting. The Gyeongju National Museum puts on display various artifacts from the ancient Shilla Kingdom. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Welcome to Gyeongju National Museum. Thank you. I enjoy to go to museum, but I cannot predict it before. But when I enter, uh, there, are, there is always something interesting. Ceramics from the Shilla period are also on display. All these are from the tombs because ancient people thought these ducks can carry their life and their soul into the different world. So that's why they buried these duck shaped figures in the tomb. These artifacts show how Shilla people viewed life. They think that life didn't finish, so if the body needed, the, the person needed some, uh, something to eat or something to drink or something to read or some good art, they would leave ob objects near him. You know, look at this. It looks like the child's play, but actually it has... There were like ceramic from Silla period, something very well done, but the best thing for my uh, mind were like little figures, uh, very uh, kind of childhood made. This work of art strikes a chord with Luce. It's very difficult right. to do childish thing when you're right. adult. <laughs> right. Old time, like clay was used to uh, was, was a part of life of uh, people because it was used to create like objects for eating or objects for work or for going uh, hunting and I feel very connected to this. This is also why I like to, to play with ceramic. There is a place that Luce has always wanted to visit in Gyeongju with its long ceramic art culture. I like that the first thing you see uh, when you arrive at his house is the major kiln with these lots of pine wood. So it was very typical, very Korean.
This is a workshop of a local potter. The house of an artist, it doesn't need much things or much opulence to show uh, you his work. It was like going back, back in time. <laughs> Kim Heik is the fifth generation member of a family of potters. He is highly recognized for having restored Kodiao Celadon. He has dedicated his life to recreating this traditional jade color of Kodiao Celadon. When I see people that want to keep tradition, I feel lucky to meet them. Because without these people, um, there is not going to be like, uh, no one is going to tell the next generation how this was done in the past. So they do something that is for the next generation. So they are very generous. Corio Celadon is known for its delicate jade color. I want to make the most important thing to make our Korea 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 Luce is deeply moved by the master's dedication. And he said that uh, failure is always with him. And I found this so humble. Uh, I don't know, I loved him. She has always been interested in Korean Celadon. She has looked forward to this moment, meeting the renowned artisan. <laughs> He showed us his uh, exhibition room, which he called a uh, garage, which is full of all his failure. I thought this was much better than every museum on everything, even whatever I'm going to see of contemporary art here in Seoul. From outside perspective, they look great. They are, the shape is amazing, the celadon, the painting, everything is perfect. But from his vision, it isn't. It's just uh, getting better in the experimentation of reaching what he wants to reach. What is the secret to recreating the unique jade color of celadon? <laughs> He says that the clear jade color appears when oxygen in the clay disappears completely and only iron particles are left. Is so well known, like next show is gonna have is gonna have a show in New York. Everyone knows about him and his mission is so generous. His mission is for the others, is for the future generation. The color of Celadon also changes according to when and how the fire is stoked. As such, recreating Celadon requires a complete mastery over fire. You are in love with the fire. How do you more? Love and hate for the fire. His last wish is to hand down to future generations the celadon firing technique that he mastered over so many years. I hope he's not going to enter the kiln to make perfect celadon because the world needs people like him. He gave me such a precious gift with his story that the last thing I could do and the only thing I could do is give him a drawing.
Luce draws the face of the master, which reflects decades of hard work. My drawings are never anatomically perfect. Like, my drawing reflects the personality of the, of the person. History was in his face. She expresses her respect for Master Kim Haik, a genuine artist who has dedicated his entire life to mastering his craft on his own. My drawing about him was uh, a tribute to him, to his story, to what uh, he was telling me. <laughs> Not perfect, but we like failure. <laughs> It's not the same price. Kamza, Kamza Mida. Here inside the spirit of Celadon. Luce receives a gift that she will never forget. She hopes that Kim, too, will remember her genuine respect for him. When night falls, Kyungju transforms into a cascade of lights. The Donggung Palace and Wolji Pond, whose name means a pond that reflects the moon, used to be a royal banquet site. I think Kyungju is a, an amazing city. So your culture is really connected to, to tradition and to good workers, good people. Luce wraps up her trip at this resplendent site. It was precious, it was really good. And this place, all Silla history and what we visited, all the masters, they, everything uh, fulfilled my heart and I'm very thankful. Wherever my art is gonna take me, I will continue to do it. This is not even a doubt because this is what I'm in this world for, uh, but keep my feet on the ground. The trip to Gyeongju has inspired Luce to take on new challenges as a ceramic and visual artist. <laughs>